What is going on my friends? Hank here from Sprues and Brews Scale Modeling. And in my last video, we learned a little bit about the development of the US infantry uniform during World War II and how we ended up with this guy back here, the M1943 field uniform. The M43 was the standard issue uniform for US GIs in the European theater in the back half of World War II. So if you're interested in World War II history at all, you've definitely seen plenty of footage of US troops wearing this iconic piece of kit. So today, we're gonna learn a quick and easy way to paint up this iconic World War II uniform on your scale model figures, so you'll be ready to go for your next scale model diorama or vehicle build. And with that said, let's hop right into it. All right, so for today's demonstration, we'll be using this great new 135 scale resin figure from Alpine Miniatures. As always, I'll have links in the description below to all the products used in today's video, if you'd like to follow along at home. I like to paint all my figures on this DIY painting jig. It's just a piece of scrap wood and a drywall screw, but it works great and you can manipulate the figure without touching him and damaging your paintwork. A little dot of super glue will hold this guy in place throughout the painting process, but it's still weak enough that we can easily pop our figure off the jig when the project is complete. Step one in our painting process will be a coat of black primer. This will give us a nice even base to work with before we proceed to our main color work. Since our figure here is wearing the late war M43 uniform, both the pants and jacket will be in what the US Army called olive drab number seven. So to save us a bit of time, we're gonna spray the whole figure with a coat of olive drab base. And to add a little contrast and interest to our all over olive drab, we're gonna grab a bit of olive drab light base and very lightly spray that on our figure from the top down. This is gonna create some artificial highlights on the raised surfaces of the figure and replicate sunlight hitting our GI's uniform. Subtle, but kind of cool, huh? All right, with our main airbrush work done, let's grab our paintbrush and start breaking up some of this olive drab. Most of our field gear is gonna be painted up in khaki, so right now I've got a nice bit of that loaded up on my brush and thinned it down a little bit with a bit of tap water. And I'm bouncing around here between three different pieces of kit. Over our GI's shoulder, he's got an ammunition bandolier, which was a pretty common sight in the latter months of the war as troops were carrying as much ammo as they could to the front. He's also wearing an M1923 cartridge belt for his M1 Garand. This would have pouches for 10 30-06 clips for our soldier's primary weapon there. And attached to the bottom of his cartridge belt, he's got two M1924 first aid pouches. These would each carry a first aid field dressing kit. All of these would be khaki, so feel free to pop around between your gear and carefully brush that all in. And on our GI's back, he's carrying what's called an M1 ammo bag. These were essentially just a big open pouch for storing grenades, even more spare ammo, or just whatever he needed to huff in there. This is also going to be khaki, so we'll paint that in as well. And to round out all this khaki work, we'll paint up his M1941 canteen cover as well. Gotta stay hydrated. Fun fact, the light khaki color that you see on a lot of US World War II gear isn't actually khaki. It's what they called olive drab number three, but most of the time you just hear it referred to as khaki. Whatever works, right? Moving on. Up next, we'll tackle our M1 Garand sling. This is the M1907 leather rifle sling, and I think it looks great in a nice aged red leather. It stands out really well against all of our drabs here. You'll notice that we don't currently have the actual M1 attached to our figure, but we'll get to that later. And while we've got our red leather out, let's tackle those boots. RGI is wearing the M1943 combat service boot, commonly referred to as the double buckle boot. These were designed to replace the original combat shoe paired with the M1938 canvas leggings that you see in this clip here from Saving Private Ryan. These new ones offered more height, weatherproofing, and stability for the foot and lower leg than the original uniform footwear, and they did away with the need for the leggings altogether. Also worth noting here, these are not paratrooper jump boots. Jump boots laced all the way up to the top and they had no buckle or upper wrap. Just a little fun fact there. Hey friends, just a quick aside here asking you to please consider hitting that subscribe button if you're enjoying today's video. It is the single biggest thing you can do to help support me and the channel here so I can keep bringing you high quality scale modeling content and you'll be the first to know about new modeling videos dropping each and every week. It's a win-win, so thank you very much. Now let's hop right back into the tutorial. All right, up next, our fella here has a Mark II grenade very nicely tucked into his bandolier, so we'll tackle that now. We're gonna use a deep Luftwaffe camo green for this to help add a little pop for this detail. We could use a more traditional olive drab, but that would kind of blend in with his M43 jacket. So we're gonna ramp up the contrast a bit here. Mark II fragmentation grenades also had a small yellow identification band just below the fuse and spoon. So we'll draw that in here with a bit of zinc chromate yellow. 
Looking back at this footage, I went a little too big with the band, so try and paint yours a little smaller, like you see in the reference image here. It's tough to see at this scale when you're not looking at the zoomed in 4K video in the editing suite, but live and learn. Next, we're gonna paint our GI's winter gloves. I made another artistic choice here to paint these a little lighter than they actually would be to provide some extra contrast at this scale. I'm using some green gray, but if you'd like to use a more accurate shade of olive drab, you could do that as well. All right, almost done with our major painting portion here. Now we're gonna cover our buckles and snaps. Take a nice fine tip brush and go ahead and draw in all this tiny hardware with a bit of flat black. And a final detail, we're gonna very carefully add a bit of white aluminum to the top of our canteen here. Oh, and also, I almost forgot, our GI is wearing a nice brown wool scarf, so we'll brush that in with some beige brown. Once our main paint job is complete, we're ready to move on to our weathering phase, which is the most important process of creating high quality figure work, if you ask me. To protect our work so far, we're gonna first spray the figure with a coat of gloss varnish. This not only is gonna keep our acrylic paints safe from our enamel weathering products, but it's also gonna help the enamel washes flow nice and smoothly over the surface of our figure. Once our gloss varnish has dried, we're gonna take some enamel dark wash and pretty liberally brush this all over our figure. You can see how the product flows into all the nooks and crannies of the figure sculpt and really helps accentuate those tiny details, especially in the seam of his uniform and in his gear. Don't worry about being messy here, the real fine detail work is gonna come with the cleanup. Since this enamel product is relatively slow drying, there's no need to rush here. So once we've got the figure nice and covered, we're gonna load up our brush with some enamel odorless thinner and start working our wash around the figure. You'll notice that when you touch the figure with the thinner, the wash you just applied flows away from the raised and flat areas of the sculpt and settles in all the recessed details, which is exactly what we want. The purpose of the wash is twofold, to accentuate those small details for the viewer by creating a sense of artificial shadow where there naturally would be shadows on a person, and to help create a subtle grimy effect so that our uniform actually looks lived in rather than being perfectly clean and tidy. When you touch the enamel thinner to the figure, you're not only applying thinner to the figure, but you're also lifting up some of that excess wash through the capillary action of the brush, so be sure to wipe your bristles off on a paper towel after each pass to remove any of this extra product. Keep working with the wash and thinner combo until you're happy with the result, and then walk away from the figure for a while until it dries completely. Here you can see our fella has sat long enough and all the enamel is dry, so it's time for a final matte varnish to protect all of our work so far and to knock down that excess shininess. We don't want our GI looking like he just walked out of a lake or something. Now you're probably wondering, what about his head and his rifle? Well, be sure to stay tuned for these next two videos to find out. You can watch them in any order you like, and then before you know it, you'll have yourself a great little GI figure to add to your collection. Thanks for watching, my friends, and until next time, be well, happy building, cheers.